good morning, everyone. Welcome to chapel, and it's good to be here with you today, and I hope as the days go by, I see you at least a little bit on the floors, but uh, I wish you were here with us, but I'm here with Jim, and we're here to worship the Lord together, so, uh, you know, gather around, and uh, let's worship God together. Let's uh, give him a word of prayer. Thank you, God, for bringing us together today. Lord, and I pray that as we join together um, in this place, over the television, Lord, that you would bind us and make us one in spirit, Lord God. Let this worship service be a corporate worship service today, Lord. Let your presence flow throughout this building, Lord God, and visit each one today. Lord, and I pray that as we hear from your word, Lord, that you would teach our hearts, Lord, to follow after you with all that we have. We thank you for this opportunity in this time. And I know we pray. Amen. Well, God gives us this greeting, grace and peace to you from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thought I'd read a bit to you this morning out of Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. And it says the following, Therefore God has highly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. One day we will all confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Well, we can confess today that Jesus is Lord. Let's confess by singing our first hymn, Amazing Grace. last week when we sang this, this song written by John Newton, a man keenly aware of God's grace. And Paul writes, right, Paul, I, Paul, chief, chief of sinners, a man who understood God's grace and see, saw how far it stretches. We use this term all the time. But therefore the grace of God go I. To say, hey, that I could be pulled into temptation, I could be um, pulled into all these other things, but God's grace has saved me from that. And if we recognize just the power of God's grace to sit, not just save your soul, but to make your life uh, better in, in so many ways, we will see that we serve a good God, a God that knows us and cares for us. Well, let's continue to worship and let's sing our next hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. <laughs> Oh 
of you have faced adversity in your life? I got an interesting uh, poem from one of our residents on adversity uh, this past week, and I read through that poem, and I thought, what is it, what it, I thought about what it means to struggle through adversity, to go through hard times, to face your fears. And then I read this story about this young man who, and I want you to see if you can notice, I'll, I'll address it in the sermon, but notice how he faces uh, this great challenge. It's in 1 Samuel 17, starting in chapter, chapter uh, 17, verse 40. And it says this, Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he approached the Philistine. And the Philistine moved forward and came near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. And when the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. And the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you have come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then David said As to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear, with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head, and I will give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air, to the wild beasts of the earth, and all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord saves, not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistine arose and came and drew near to David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell on his face to the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and, with a, and struck the Philistine and killed him. There was no sword in the hand of David. You know, I uh, struggled a little bit as a grade schooler uh, with my reading comprehension. And so, and this teacher, um, as many teachers often do, they change, she changed my life and she says, as you read it, um, see it as a movie going on in your head. So I, 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 when, I, when I read books, when I read the Bible, I often see, I, maybe I've told you this before many times, but I often see it as a movie going off in my head. And I see this slender, beardless boy. Mud moistens his knee as the, he, as the bubbling water cools his hand. He, he's searching for rocks, for stones, for smooth stones, the kind that stick neatly into the shepherd's pouch. They rest flush against the shepherd's sling, flat rocks that balance heavy on the palm and missile with comet crashing force on the head of a lion or a bear, and in this case, a giant. Goliath towers above him nine feet, nine inches tall in his stocking feet, wearing 125 pounds of armor and snarling like the main contender at the Worldwide Wrestling Federation Championship night. He wears a size 20 collar, a size 10 and a half hat, a 56 inch belt, and his biceps burst Thymus muscles ripple, and boasts belch through the canyon, This day I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. Who will go mano a mano? Give me your best shot. What odds did David have against this giant? Better odds, perhaps, than you give yourself against yours, your Goliath doesn't carry a, sh a, sh a sword and a shield. He brandishes blades of loss of independence, declining health, blades of depression. Your giant doesn't parade up and down the hills of Elah. He prances through your office, through your bedroom, through your living room. He brings bills you can't pay, maybe an unexpected fall, people you can't please, whiskey you can't resist, loneliness, you can't escape a past you can't shake and a future that you can't face. How long has he stalked you? Goliath's family was an ancient foe of the Israelites. 
Joshua drove them out of the promised land 300 years earlier, and Saul's soldiers saw Goliath and mumbled, Not again. My dad fought his dad. My granddad fought his granddad. And you've grown similar words. I'm becoming a workaholic, just like my father. Divorce streaks through my family tree like an oak. My mom couldn't keep a friend either. Is this ever going to stop? When Saul and his men heard the Philistines' challenge, they were terrified. With all the giants we face, where is our focus? Do you see God? But what am I telling you? You know Goliath. You recognize his walk and wits at his talk. You've seen your Godzilla. The question is, is he all that you see? You know his voice, but is it all that you hear? David saw and heard more. David's first discussion, although it was about Goliath, was on the Lord. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he defy the armies of the living God? David shows up, not discussing the giant, but discussing God. The soldiers mention nothing about him. The brothers never spoke his name, but David takes one step into the stage and raises the subject of the living God. He does the same with King Saul. No chit-chat about the battle, no question about the odds, no strategy, no tactics. Just a god birth announce announcement. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. No one else, no one else discusses God. David discusses no one else but God. A subplot appears in the story. More than David versus Goliath, this is God focus versus giant focus. David sees what others don't see and refuses to see what others do see. All eyes except David's fall on the brutal, hate-breathing hulk. All compasses except David's were set on the pole star of the Philistine. All journals but David's described day after day in the land of the, of the Neanderthal. The people know his taunts, his demands, his size, and his strut. They have majored in Goliath. David on the other hand, majors in God. He sees the giant, mind you. He just sees God more. Look carefully at David's battle cry. You come with, to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel. David sees the armies of God. And because he does, David hurries and runs to meet to the battle to meet this Philistine. David's brothers cover their eyes both in fear and in embarrassment. Saul sighs as the young Hebrew races to certain death, and Goliath throws back his head in laughter. Just enough, I believe, just enough to expose a little spot on his forehead as his helmet slides back a little. David spots the target and seizes the moment. The sound of the swirling swing is the sling is the only sound in the valley. stone torpedoes towards the skull. Goliath's eyes cross, legs buckle, he crumples to the ground and dies, and David runs over and yanks Goliath's sword from the sheath, shish kebabs the Philistine, and cuts off his head. You might say that David knew how to get ahead of his giant. When was the last time you did the same? How long since you ran towards your challenge? We tend to retreat and put up a wall of isolation or a smile like everything's okay for a moment or a day or a year. We feel safe, insulated, and anesthetized. But the work, when the work runs out, the pain comes back, or the smile fades and we hear Goliath again, booming and bombastic. Try a different tact. Rush towards your giant with a God-saturated soul. Amplify God and minimize Goliath. Download some of heaven's unsquashable resolve. Giant of divorce, you are not entering my home. Giant of depression, it may take a lifetime, but you will not conquer me. Giant of sickness and loneliness or finances or insecurity, you're going down. How long since you've loaded your sling and took a swing at your giant? One might read David's story and wonder what God saw in him. 
The fellow fell as often as he stood, some stumbled as often as he conquered. He stared down Goliath, yet googled at Bathsheba, defied God's mockers in the valley, yet joined them in the wilderness. An eagle scout one day, chumming with the mafia the next day. He could lead armies, but couldn't manage a family. Raging David, weeping David, bloodthirsty, God-hungry, eight wives, one God. Acts 13.22 reminds us that God, that God said that David was a man after God's own heart. A man after God's own heart? A God, that God saw him as such gives us, that gives, in such a way that gives hope to all of us. David's life has little to offer the unstained saint. Straight A souls find David's story disappointing. The rest of us find it reassuring. We ride the same roller coaster. We alternate between swan dives and belly flops, souffles and burnt toast. In David's good moments, no one was better. In his bad moments, no one could be worse. The heart, of, the heart God loved was a checkered one. We need David's story. Giants lurk in our neighborhood. Rejection, failure, revenge, remorse. Giants, we must face them. We, yet we need not face them alone. First focus and most, mostly focus on God. The times that David did, his giants fell. The days he didn't, David fell. David made only two observations about Goliath in 1 Samuel 17. One statement to Saul about Goliath and one to Goliath's face. Who was this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of God? That's it. Two Goliath-related comments and tacky ones at that. No questions. No inquiries about Goliath's skill, his age, his social standing, his IQ. David asks nothing about the weight of the sword or the size of the spear, but he gives much thought to God. As we read David's words again, I count nine references to the Lord. God thoughts outnumber Goliath thoughts nine to two. How does this ratio compare with yours? Do you ponder God's grace four times as much as you ponder your guilt? Is your list of blessings four times as long as your list of complaints? Is your mental file of hope four times as thick as your mental file of dread? Are you four times as likely to describe the strength of God as you as you are the demands of your day. The whole matter, matter can be summed up in the following couplet. Focus on giants and you stumble. Focus on God, your giants tumble. Lift your eyes, giant slayer, to the God who made a miracle out of David. He stands ready to make one out of you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we face our giants as we face uncertain times and certain days Lord help us to keep our eyes focused upon you help us to reach for you as the first thing we do in times of adversity in times of uh, stress in times of loneliness in times of despair Lord help us to reach for you in all of those times and find like David that when we do we conquer our giant we thank you for this time Let's sing together our last hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
You know, in this world, if you're looking for fear, you'll find it. You need no more than turn on the TV. I'm not suggesting we be uninformed, but rather be informed, more informed about God and his character. Greater than your sickness, greater than your depression, greater than your loneliness, God is even greater than this dreaded pandemic. We worship a mighty God. Let's start acting like we do worship a mighty God. Let's pray together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's sing our doxology together. shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you his peace.